Uh, so good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dumi. Welcome to Sanctuary Mandela. Welcome home. Uh, the reason why we refer to it as home is because we are a hotel. However, uh, we don't like to refer to ourselves as a hotel because we are a home. This is the home that Utada, as we refer to him, um, or Mr. Mandela, um, we stayed in from the year 1992 till the year 1998. So basically his presidential years. Uh, later on in the year, he then married Mam Grasha Marshall. Then they moved to the 12th Avenue house, which is in the next street. This is the house then, um, in this specific house, he had brought back all his grandchildren to live with him in this house. So when he married Mam Grasha, they then all moved to the house in the 12th Avenue. This is then where the Nelson Mandela Foundation started. Okay. So if you look at the pathway, which is the one that you used, I believe, You'll see on the steel pillars on either side, we've got three words. The words freedom, democracy, and peace. Um, those are the words, those are basically the words that Utada lived by. Those are basically his values. Okay, so if you look at those beautiful roses over there, those are called the Mandela roses. Those roses were specially cultivated for Utada. You find these roses in places where he's commemorated. So the color of that rose is called an orange vermilion color. It starts off to bloom in a deep red color, then blooms into either a blush pink or a burnt orange. So you'll see the different shades over there. Right, so over here, this thorny tree here is called the fever tree. Udata had planted a tree just like that when he stayed here. He grew to be very big and tall. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the renovations that took place, we were unable to salvage it. We then decided to, build, to, to plant uh, a tree of our own. Okay. So over here, you get flowers uh, called the Kirsten Bosch Strelitzia. So the original flower, when it blooms, it blooms into an orange and purple color. However, these ones were also uh, later cultivated for Dada. They bloom into a yellow and blue. They then later named this specific flower, the Mandela Gold Strelitzia. Okay. So this is a flower that you find behind one of our coins, which is called the 50 cent coin. Yes, yes, yes. So, when we look at the house itself, the white part of the house, we've kept the original face, the original facade of the original home, and then we've also kept the wooden window panes of the original home. So, the red bricks that you see on either sides, those form part, that is part of the new and extended parts of the home. So, after he left the place, this is where the Nelson Mandela Foundation started. However, the Nelson Mandela Foundation also grew bigger. Then they moved to a bigger property down the road. So, I'll show you pictures of how the house looked just before we started with the renovations. But we can go inside. If you can follow me. So, over here, this is one of our statement pieces. Um, this is a scarf by Mr. Andre Prince Lu. There's a reason why he chose this specific image, and if you can follow me, I'll show you why. So here's the image. So Tata was very pedantic with his newspaper. Anyone who had touched his newspaper before him, he would return it. That's how strict he was when he came, when he came to his newspaper. Another interesting story here is that he used to, what he used to do, because he used to love hosting a lot of lunches over here. So he'd circle the top five JSC markets, or companies that were doing well in the market at that time, and somehow try and get them over for some lunch or dinner over here. And in those talks, try and negotiate for them to donate to the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Okay, so the home itself, if, can, if I could just stand here, so the home itself has nine bedrooms for accommodation. Of the nine rooms, the three, we've kept the original bedrooms of the home. So every, everything in the home, every, um, every painting, every, every artwork has a story. So we've, what we've done, um, we also have, sorry about that, so we've got two meeting rooms as well. And all the rooms in the home are named after a name that he was known by or a name he was given. For instance, this is his original study and it is called the Dalibunga. Dalibunga means convene of meetings. Utata comes from the Bunga clan and they are known to be great negotiators. So this is one of our smallest meeting, meeting rooms. We use it for hosting birthday dinners, private dinners, conferencing private meetings as well. We also have the Comrade, which is our bigger meeting room. We host about 16 guests. Um, comrade means colleague, and that's how they used to refer to each other back then. 
So unfortunately, the two rooms right now are both occupied with kids, so I won't be able to show you how they look. But this is his original study. We've also kept the original fireplace in the study as well. Okay. So in he in the comrades behind his study, he had a rondavo. I don't know if you um, uh, like a hut, a mud hut. No. Yes. So he had a modernized mud hut. And then what we did, we broke down that hut and then we kept the original foundation of that actual hut in that room. And it forms, so that foundation forms a part of the stairway, I'll show you when we go outside to the pool, of the stairway of our pool as well. Okay. The hut, so he was a very cultural man. Um, we believe it was just to keep that cultural, his cultural values the same. Okay. So what we've done, next to the rooms, you will find paintings. So these are not actual photographs. They're paintings by Mr. John Mayer, who had spent time with Tata. And what he did, he used his imagination of the stories that he heard of Utata and put the, and painted them, basically. So what we've done, we've placed a painting right next to um, each room, and it explains the theme of the room. So this painting here is called A Crucial Decision. We've placed it right next to Tata's study. It just tells you about the important um, decisions and crucial decisions that took place in the study. It, it, they are, they, Mr. John May was very detailed. <laughs> so, um, and then if you just look behind you over here at our front desk. So over here, we get what you call coronation bricks. These are some of the bricks that we managed to salvage from the old house. We then decided to build the foundation of our front desk with them. So you don't find coronation bricks anymore. The company today is called Coral Brick. And they don't make the sort of a special type of brick in here because they don't brand their bricks in here as well. Okay, so remember I spoke about the Nelson Mandela Foundation moving to the bigger property. This, these are the images that were taken just before they started with renovations in 2018. So those are the images over there. Yes. 2018. So we can move right over here. So Utata, during his visits, he used to get a lot of gifts. So this is one of the gifts that from Miss from uh, Miss Bongi Tlomo, who is a very uh, uh, well-known artist. This was just for him, for her to commemorate Tata for the ten years of democracy. Okay. So we can move on upstairs. If, I don't know if you're comfortable with the stairs or the elevator. Stairs, what's me? Let's do the stairs. So, this triangle over here is where the original garage used to be, but this is now where you find our kitchen. You know the first floor, right? Yes, okay. yes. And then looking at the rooms themselves, Room 1, 2, and 3 are the original bedrooms of the home. So the first room, the main bedroom, is where he used to sleep in. And these two rooms was then where his grandchildren slept in. So the first room, room 3, is called Tata. Tata basically, that's Utata going home. Um, that is Tata basically now going home and going to go rekindle with all the, love, with all the t time lost with his loved ones. And if, I don't know if you're familiar with the place that he comes from, the Eastern Cape, there are a lot of mountains over there. Okay. So this is also one of our uh, statement pieces. Uh, we've kept the original wall of the home. And then if you look at this room over here, it's called room two. It's called Kholishash. Kholishash is Tata's birth name. So the painting that speaks to this room is called Boyhood. And basically, if you can just look at this painting, you can still see the mountains over there in the Eastern Cape. This is Tata now running out to the world with all his innocence. So the two paintings contrast each other. They're the exact same paintings. However, that's him going back home. This is him running out to the world. Okay. Yeah, so this room is the one that he used to sleep in. So he always made sure that he came back to, like I mentioned, he always made sure that 
he came back every night to this house because he had brought back all his grandchildren to live with him obviously to make time to make up for the time that was lost so this room over here is called mr president and then the painting that speaks to this room is called father of the innocent um, this is this room basically speaks about the time when Utata was the president um, Looking at the painting itself, you can see the un union buildings over there uh, the famous Madiba shirt His love for children and diversity as well Okay, so over here we also have his original balcony We've also kept that I don't know if you'd like to go outside. Yes, you're more than welcome to <laughs> thank you thank you very much no so this is just part of our deco but there is a story about this this specific green color so in our rooms unfortunately we have in-house guests um, a lot quite a few in-house guests so i can't take you inside the rooms however in the room you'll notice that there's a part of the wall that's strictly painted with this color so to to data this color meant growth and new beginnings you find it in all our rooms So then everything going that side is new. So everything that side is new and extended. Over here we get to room 4. Room 4 is one of our smallest rooms in the home. And it's called room 46664 which was Dada's prison cell number. So the painting that speaks to this room is called Facing the Night. And what we have in this room, we have a feature that you would find in a prison cell. So the high window that you would find in a prison cell, we also have it in that room as well. So then we get to the famous uh, Madiba photograph. So he was not actually a professional boxer. However, he had a love and a passion for it. He just didn't get the time to pursue a career in boxing. I'm not quite sure. I think probably in his early 30s, mid, I think early mid 30s there. Okay. Then we get to room five. Room five is called Nell. Nell is the name that Tata's closest friends used to call him. So this room, this painting over here is called Pillars of Stone. In this room specifically, we have the letter that Utata had written back to his first daughter. So his first daughter, six years into his imprisonment, had written to him asking when his return would be. And he wrote, he then in the letter stated, at the end of the letter, that she must not be, she must not worry, he's still in good spirits. However, when you look at this painting, um, they made him, they made them grind a lot of limestone in prison. And that is why his eyesight when he came back was not that great. So this was solely just to break their spirits. So this painting just tells you about Utada's friends being the pillars of his strength during that time. Okay, so our tour by the rooms is almost complete. We get to room six called Nelson. Dada did not have an English name from birth, was not given an English name. This name he was given to when he was in his primary, primary years by his teacher called Miss Mundakani. And this painting basically is, the painting that speaks to this room is called Uncovered Evidence. It basically just tells you about the time when Utata was a lawyer. And as you can see from the painting over there, Dada, young Dada um, stating and fighting for what he was passionate about. Then we get to room 7 called David Mutsamai. David Mutsamai is the name that was on his passport when he fled Botswana. Um, this is basically the time when he was on the run. The painting that speaks to this room is called Black Pimpernel. So Black Pimpernel is the name that the Afrikaans media had given him at that time. Mm. And what is the... Okay, the black is part I understand. Pimpernel. So it comes from the novel. I don't know if you know the novel of Scar the, Scar the Scarlet. I think it's Scarlet Pimpernel. Basically speaks about a person who's on the run but trying to save people. I'm not sure about the name, but it's it's Scarlet the Pimpernel of Scarlet, Scarlet of Pimpernel. If I'm not sure. 
We are not so David Mutsamai. We don't know why David, but I Mutsamai in another language means to walk, to walk a lot. So we thinking that is why he chose Mutsamai. Okay. So we get to room eight. Room eight is called accused number one. Now we get to the end of Tata's run. We get to the time where he was captured. This is not the ex exact place where he was captured. He was captured in KwaZulu Natal, in Midlands, at a place called Hawick. So that is where. So this is not the original capture site. This is not how it looks. But I believe that they've also created a site, um, a heritage site for that place as well. It is because it's another. It's in another, another province. So yeah, it's about a, a lot of kilometers away from here. <laughs> So then we get to room nine, room nine called Madiba. So most of our guests always go for the boxer. But Tata, however, is seated right over there. So this painting is called Nelson Dreaming because Tata was actually not at this fight. This is him basically dreaming of pursuing a career in boxing. He had such a lot of passion and love for it. He just didn't get the time. But if you can look at this painting as well, another way you can look at it is that he was also dreaming at that time to fight the oppression that was going on. Okay, so we can move on downstairs. So I can. Um, I'm not sure what Madiba means. I, I, I'll be lying if I. But I, it's one of it's one of the prominent names that he was given. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I don't have that info. Okay. So we can move on downstairs. So remember I spoke about the fireplace in the original yes. study. We've kept the chimney as well right over here. So right over there, those, that is also one of our statement pieces. We have kept the original parquet flooring of the home. So the reason why we've kept that floor is because we wanted to still keep the warmth of that as home. So it was basically as you walked in. That's where it used to be. Yes. What about the carpet? No, these are new. These are new. Okay. So over here on your right, we have what you, our restaurant restaurant called insights so insights is inspired by one of our paintings in the restaurant i don't know if you'd like to just come closer to see so it's mr Buckington. so the reason why we chose the word insights is that we wanted uh, our guests to also come here and have reflective and um insightful conversations in our restaurant if you notice that we also have an open plan kitchen, um, Utata loved for his chef to interact with his guests. So we still to this day have the chef that served him for 22 years, Mom Koli. Um, she's still with us today. She's, she's off today, unfortunately. She's off today. But what we've also done, um, the menu that you find, the, the dishes that you find in our menu, um, are dishes that are inspired by dishes that are inspired by some of Tata's favorite dishes so that's what we've done with our menu okay and then over here we get to our bar um, I get a lot of questions about this piece so this is an original Quincy Jones piece that he wrote for um, it's called the color purple for Umadib yes It's from the color purple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our bar. Utata was not a heavy drinker, however, he did have a preferred wine, and it's called a Boschendal Vendor. It is a very, very, very sweet wine. It's a dessert wine, basically. It's in, a, it's in a small little bottle like that, but very, very sweet. And what we've done with our menu in our bar is that what we've done is the wine farms that you find here. We've they are either aligned with who Udata was or who we are. So they'd probably be giving, doing some charity work, doing community work, being black owned, or take, basically just taking care of the children. Okay, I just want to tell you about this, this painting over here. 
so this painting here is called the jazz club this painting so we tend to forget that utata was also once young that he also lived he had his youthful years this painting just basically reminds you us reminds us of that that he also had social and youthful years okay we can move on outside so welcome to our pool um this is a heated pool uh not heavily chlorinated uh mostly salted and then remember i spoke about the rondovo the hut that he had so the foundation if you can look through that window over there that glass that you can you see that glass piece just just through that window over there that glass piece inside so just on top of the ice buckets there's a glass piece that moves like that like right around so it moves right around and it forms stairs yes so it forms part of these stairs that's where his original hut was we've kept the original foundation yes so behind so remember i said we've got two meeting rooms it's a meeting room yes it's comrade so we've got dalibunga and then we've got comrade yes that is one of our biggest meeting rooms okay and i don't know if you have any other questions but that is the end of my tour <laughs> You most welcome. I hope it was insightful. That is wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family uh, do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on our children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora, as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa. And they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.